because of Jonathan Randall, I had a uh, awakening of a uh, of a tool I haven't used for a long time, and it's called a um, warp, and it does some pretty fantastic things. I'll do a real quick example here to show what this warp is capable of. Um, the, the, the really what it can do is uh, is outrageous. It um, it can be used in a variety of ways, but I'm going to show a little quick one here. So I'm going to take, I it took, made one layer, and I'm going to make another. I'm going to select none, and I'm going to take this, uh, take this layer, and I'm going to flip it 180. That'll give me a duplicate down below. And to trim them off so they're even, I'll just go like this. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to join this down, uh, merge down, and uh, that'll give me an even two ends on it. Now I'm going to select none. I'm going to put some black in the middle. Um, I'll put a black streak in the middle. This warping tool does a really neat thing from very simple designs. You can use it on images too, but on, uh, on just plain uh, blocks it does very neat. Select none. Now we'll take this and we go to filters. We go to um, distorts and warp and there it is that's the warp tool now you can swirl it and reset you can increase the radius of it so if you swirl it does a bigger thing uh, there's the radius that's the amount of deform we'll go to increase that radius right here and we'll go to this end let's swirl this and we'll go to this end and let's swirl it. And because they were almost the same, except in counter directions, this is what I wind up with. This is really a pretty neat looking thing to me. And if I add a background to it, see we put a, uh, a white background in it. Here's what we get. Very neat looking drawing, very neat looking thing. And uh, I can of course select them. I'll take and select. I'll make this so I. This is if you select one. I'm going to show this tool here. If I select one and I go like that, I can select it or that one, but not both. If I go like this, it shows both of them. I can select the two. So now I've got them both selected. I'm going to take that selection and I'm going to shrink it. I'm going to shrink it so I can have a small area inside without all this on the outside. So let me shrink this by, uh, I'm going to shrink by a pretty good amount and see if I can, can't get rid of the, uh, there I did, I got rid of, I do have that in here. I want to choose these right here, so that in order to do that, I'm going to make myself a layer and I'm going to fill in, I'll fill in all of them and I'll fill in with a black. That come out pretty nice. May take and shrink it down uh, or merge it down and that way I can resize everything. I don't want to rotate it. Resize everything. Keep them in proportion and may shrink it down a little bit. Shrink. Okay. Now I can take and move that where I want. I want to move it up here because I want to put a shadow on it and drop a shadow down. I want to play with an idea. Okay, let's uh, make it to the image size and uh, let me select all of the red component. All of the red component. Put another layer in. And in this bottom layer, let's paint that red component black. Now, what I did, you can't see because it's in this layer. If I close this layer off, you'll see what I did. Let me select none. So I actually just made a copy of the red part and put it on the bottom. Now I can take that copy and offset it, which will add a shadow to the top layer. So there it is offset. And uh, matter of fact, I can offset it a lot. You can see it there. And so it doesn't actually uh, interfere too much with the original. 
I can take and back down on the uh, opacity of it. So there's more like a real shadow. And again, you can move that shadow anywhere you want to. It probably look better about there. So we'll take that layer and we'll do it to the image size. Now let's take and put that on something fancy here. We'll take and put it on a uh, on a, just a plain sheet. Let's take this sheet and then we'll put an edging on it or do something with it. We'll put a shadow on it. That would be nice. So let me take this. I'll cut it out here. There's the background. We want that background balance as much as possible. You can be up. If you want to put writing on the bottom, that would be okay to do. If you want just the border for everything, you can do Let's do this right here. And we'll do it for the novelty of it. And I'm going to take and cut it. Cut. And then paste it in place. Let's paste it in the exact same location. We'll turn that to a new layer. So there it is. If I close these off, see there it is. And we'll select none. And if I do the bottom layer, you see it's missing. There it is up on top. Let's slide it down close to it and put a layer in between. Here's a layer in between the two. Now if I turn it on, there it is. See? So let's take this layer here, this top layer, choose it. But we can make that to uh, to an uh, image size. Because I pasted it, let me back that up so I can show you. Because I pasted it, it pasted it as a as exactly in the same spot, but a smaller image. But we want it to be the full size. So we go here and go layer to image size, and you see the yellow border went to the outside. And let's turn these back on. So now I want to take this. Uh, this layer right here and choose it. See what it did? It chose only the layer I was on. And I want to go to the bottom and I want to paint it black. Now again, if I turn the top off, I've got a black layer under it. Select none. Select none because if I do something with that layer and I'm in a selection, it's not going to bleed outward. You won't see anything. Because I'm going to take this selection right here and I'm going to go to the Gaussian blur and I'm going to make a big blur on it. Yeah, a good size blur. And there you see it extend to the outside. Now I can actually merge that. If I want to take and merge it down, now that's all in one. The shadow and that is in one drawing. And if I wanted to, well, I can I can do this as a demo. Okay, now we'll go in here and make another layer. Anything I put on here, that will appear on. So if I say, hey, I want to put a, a a light blue background in there, I can paint a light blue background, and this layer right here remains there. It can be put anywhere I want to. Uh, let's put it back in the center where I had it. And to catch that extra pixel or two, we'll just tell it to uh, layer to image size. Now let's go ahead and use that, I guess. I don't know, because I, wanna, I, I wanted to follow that red and black theme, and there I'm getting out of it. I think I want to do this in white. I want a red, black, and a white. And if I do that in a blue, I've, I've lost my whole theme I want to work at. And notice what I did here. I could overlap it, or I could move it within, but I chose to overlap it. Now, something very neat can be done here that uh, I don't know it's going to come out. I take and merge that down. Merge that down. That means I join the shadow and the image again. And I might be able to remove that background because that area in there it looks a little complicated. So what if I take this and I select it? I'll select and invert my selection. Then I will 
grow that selection by about uh, a dozen pixels. And if I go to here, I'm going to make a copy just in case I don't like it. I'll have a backup of it. But if I don't like what I do here. And I'm going to erase this right here. You see what I did? I erased that little bit of shadowing everything that was in there because it seemed like it was complicating everything a little bit too much. And it said around and that just squared off. I don't know if it looks better rounded or squared. I look at that little corner right there. Maybe rounded is nice. But you see what the difference. Let me move this up so you can see what I did. There it is with that area in there. And here it is when I remove it. I like it better removed, I think. I think I like it better removed. Okay, so now I've got room to write down here at the bottom or right up here. Because I'm going to use this for a thumbnail. And I'm going to call this uh, I'm going to write in here and write black white and red. And since it was in white, you can't see it. Let's take it and select it all anyway. Increase the size of it to fit in that area. And I'll change the color right here. I can change the color to black. We'll change it to black. Now we can position it where we want to. Okay, and we take that and turn it into the uh, image size. Now let's make the white white. So let's select it. This tool, if I use this tool, it selects all the black letters, all of them. If I use this tool, it will select only the ones I click on. There, 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 and there. Now if I take that and select and shrink it by two, that should leave a black outline, but white inside. Let's shrink it by three and see what that does. Okay, so now we have black, white, and we go to the red. Let's go to the red and select none. Now normally, well you can click this right here, you can click it. And say, okay, I want to paint these red. And I think that's the way. I think that's just the way I'll do it. Yeah, that's just the way I'll do it. Uh, sometimes I choose the outside area and then reverse it. That way, if there's any stray pic, well, let's look real close and see if there's any stray pixels. I can show you real quick what I'm talking about. Let's select none. And let's zoom up in this. There are stray pixels in there. There are some stray pixels. Now watch what happens when I choose it with this. It is getting all the pixels this time. Sometimes it doesn't. It does look like it's got every pixel. If it doesn't, you can click on the outside. You can click out here and tell it invert it and that selects everything inside without a doubt there would be no off shade pixel in there and then we go here with a paintbrush and we paint that area in now let's back it off with select none and we back it off hit the magnifying glass hit control 
depending on how your computer is set, control can either shrink it or it can enlarge it. I've got mine set in such a way here. If you look here under the tools, I have it set where control is a zoom in, but you can switch it wherever you want to. Okay, uh, let's go back to where we are in the layers. So now we have black, white, and red. And at the very bottom, I'm going to write computer graphics or computer art. So we do another layer. We'll take and move this down, uh, merge down, because that's all good right there. We like that. That's fine. See, I know I'm also going to want to switch that and put it in the middle without that being offset and uh, see what it looks like to me. That's why I saved it down. Uh, I saved that edge down to bottom. I guess if I, I say things, that, but to, I should explain it. If I make this bottom visible now, let's make that bottom visible. And if I move it up here, We'll take a look and see what I'm talking about. That's at the very bottom. I see here. If I take that one. There you go. There you go. And then I can take this. And let me make a copy of it because I like that position there. I don't want to have to reposition it. If I take this position right here, I can take that layer. Again, there it is. And I can slide it. Oh, I merged it down. I merged it. I merged it with the letters. Okay. Cut. Paste in place. Make into a new layer. Select none. Make the layer. Make that layer the image size. Now I can take this. Look what I've done. I broke the two apart. That's what I just did. I took them apart. Now I can take this layer and I can slide it. So if I want to look at it, I have to slide the right one, don't I? Now if I want to look at it like this, I say, well, which one do I like best? If I do that, it would be that would be the image size. So which one do I like best? I don't know. Do I like it there? Or do I like it there? Tell me down in the comments which one you think is best, centered or offset. And if you tell me you like it centered, I can change the thumbnail. I just change it. There's enough people that like it that way. It's all a game anyway here. So, so if I do this, I'm going to see how I can save them both. I can go up here and say new from visible. So I've got that one saved. Now if I offset it, I want to use that layer and I go new from visible. Select. Oh no, no, I want to go layer and make new from visible. Now if you see, I've got them both. There, I've got that one. If I turn it off, I got the other one underneath. Now I've got a copy of both of them. And if I take my I take my text I want to add, I put it up on top here. And I want to add at the very bottom. Um, computer art. art 
and graphics. And again, control A, select them all, and I can increase the size until it's something that will fit inside that area. There it is. It turned out to be just the same size as it. Again, I take that and make it into a. Uh, get my I take that and turn it into a uh, layer to image size. The bottom one I think I want different. I don't want it the same as that. I don't want it like that. I don't want it like that. I want a whole different one. So I'm going to take this bottom one here. I'm going to duplicate it. Take the very bottom. Select everything. Now here's one talking about. I select out here. And this is the transparent area. I'm selecting the transparent area. And if I invert that, select invert, now it's only the letters. And if I want to paint those letters black, I have to hit that and I can paint them black. But what I want to do, there's the top layer. I want to go to the bottom layer. I want to increase the size, select, grow. I'm going to grow it by two. There, I grew it by two, and I can go that bottom layer now, and it's just slight, a little bit bigger. Let's zoom up on this so we can look at it. It's a little bit bigger than what the letter is. So if I go here and I paint it, and I paint it black, look what it does. So let's zoom it down and we'll do the whole thing. Nice. Fun stuff, isn't it? So here you see how a thumbnail is made. You see a little bit of black and white dropping shadows and um, ideas to play with. Plus you saw how to warp. So um, that's what I really should put on this thumbnail, isn't it? I should put warp computer up graphics and uh, and warping something about warping in here. So if I get ready, let's see if I do this. Okay, we'll take this and uh, we'll make that into a image. Put a layer new from visible. That's not where I have to change it. I could change it there, but there's no need to. What I need to do is just write at the very bottom, black, white, and red, and write, um, okay. All right. Uh, GIMP image effects. Warp. GIMP image effect warp. And we'll select it all. Increase the size again. There it is. Make that to the uh, image size. Let's select those. Shrink it by one. It'll shrink by three. We'll shrink it by three. And do it red. Okay, now I've got a thumbnail for this video I'm going to put up because this is how to do image effects. 
Hey, you have a good day. Thank you very much. If you like this, subscribe and uh, give the old thumbs up in there and share this stuff. Share my videos. If you share them, more people look and the more people look, the more enthusiastic I get about making videos. Thank you very much. Bye. Hey, if you enjoy this video, like, subscribe, and click on a link above. Thank you.